So all of that said, unfortunately at present, and as many of you know, the dark web does come with it a bit of a negative reputation as well, as a result of an excess of criminal behavior, which tends to occur within these anonymized networks. On a high level, traffic travels through several privately hosted nodes on the network, which aids in keeping the source of this traffic anonymous. It is nearly impossible to determine from which node the traffic originated, which is why Tor quickly became a playing ground for criminal activity. However, despite the anonymity or pseudonymity associated with dark web communications, criminal users aren't entirely immune to getting caught. You may remember a story from the news a few years ago about a dark web criminal marketplace known as the Silk Road. The Silk Road was a place where users could buy and sell illegal goods and services. They could pay others to crack social networking account credentials or provide them with instructions on how to hack into ATMs or other devices of their choosing. They could also purchase forged documents, drugs, firearms, ammunition. They could even hire hitmen. Silk Road wasn't a small place either. With about $1.2 billion in transactions, law enforcement's interest was certainly piqued. Intelligence specialists at the FBI began to research historical data on the open web in an effort to track down the earliest mention of the Silk Road. And they found it. The research led them to an open web drug enthusiast website known as the Shroomery. And in January of 2011, a user named Altoid posted the following. I came across this website called Silk Road. It's a Tor hidden service that claims to allow you to buy and sell anything online anonymously. I'm thinking of buying off it, but wanted to see if anyone here had heard of it and could recommend it. He then provides an open web link which redirects to a Tor hidden service and the direct onion link for the Silk Road marketplace. A couple days later on a different forum, a user named Altoid appeared again, describing the Silk Road as an anonymous Amazon and providing the same link information. A few more posts in the same format were also found throughout forums in 2011. In October of that year, however, also I got sloppy. On Bitcoin Talk, the same forum where he referred to the Silk Road as an anonymous Amazon, he made another post in search of an IT pro with a special interest in Bitcoin. In this post, he then listed his contact information as rossulbrick at gmail.com. Dude. From this, the FBI was easily able to connect the very first mentions of the Silk Road on the open web to the username Altoid, and thereafter, partially in thanks to this post from October, to Ross Ulbrich. In early 2012, Ross also made a post on Stack Overflow, under the username Ross Ulbrich, which he quickly changed to Frosty, inquiring about an error he was receiving when trying to connect to a Tor hidden service. He included a snippet of code which later incriminated him even further. In addition, the FBI was also able to connect some very specific interests posted by the user running the Silk Road, Dread Pirate Roberts, to ones that were also posted by Ross Ulbricht on LinkedIn. The timing on the posts made by Dread Pirate Roberts also led law enforcement to believe that the user was likely to be located in the Pacific time zone. It was then discovered that connections to the server hosting the Silk Road were being made by a VPN from a cafe in San Francisco, where Ross just so happened to live and from which he had also connected to his personal Gmail account. The FBI then began taking down the Silk Road servers. On one of the servers, they found several lines of code identical to what Ross had posted on Stack Overflow. They also found a user key on one of the boxes belonging to Frosty at Frosty. And if that wasn't enough, around the same time, Ulbricht was questioned by the FBI at his home due to the fact that he had ordered a package of nine fake IDs, all containing his own photo. The package was intercepted at the Canadian border, and the destination address led law enforcement to him. Upon being questioned, he actually volunteered information about the Silk Road. Ulbricht stated that, hypothetically, anyone could go onto a website named Silk Road on Tor and purchase any drugs or falsified identity documents that the person wanted. He was eventually taken down in a library immediately after entering his password on his laptop. Convenient for the FBI. But that's not even the worst part. While Albrecht is currently serving a life sentence in a New York prison as a result of the charges he faced due to his connections to the Silk Road, a case in the state of Maryland is also still pending for six murders for hire that he paid $730,000 for, but are thankfully believed to have never actually occurred. <laughs>